There's too much oil and too little demand. Too much oil because the world is producing too much and too little demand because of the coronavirus. People aren't traveling, they're not using their cars, they're staying home. Uh, trucks that deliver things to stores aren't moving because stores aren't open. And airlines are virtually shut down. So the demand for oil is significantly less than it was before, worldwide. And this has led to a sharp decline in oil prices. Traders are trading these contracts called futures contracts, which set a delivery date and a price for taking oil, for buying oil. And what they're finding is uh, there's no place to store the oil. There's so much oil in the world that the storage is filling up. So they're in effect paying people to take the oil off their hands so they don't have to take delivery. And they're paying up to $40 a barrel uh, for people to take this oil off their hands. So this has pushed the price of oil to minus $40 a barrel. Now it's important to note this is only a U.S. phenomenon. This is what's called the West Texas Intermediate Oil Contract, which is the benchmark for U.S. oil prices. There's a separate international benchmark called Brent, where that hasn't moved. It's still over $20 a barrel. The problem is, longer term, you still have this supply and demand imbalance. Too much supply chasing too little demand. So next month we may be in the same situation where traders are paying people to take the oil off their hands, pushing oil prices into negative territory. Well, obviously, oil prices that they would pay at the pump for their car um, are going to be lower, except that they're, for the most part, not driving anywhere. So it doesn't make that much of a difference at the moment. Over the longer run, it depends on how long the oil glut uh, uh, sticks around. If, if, if the oil glut lasts for six months, then later this year you should see significantly lower consumer prices. But if it's cleared up in a couple of months, you may never see it because the rise in demand, people going back to normal lives or more normal lives, uh, there won't be much of a change in prices. The oil traders who, who had to sell oil, in effect, losing $40 a barrel, they were big losers. But also U.S. shale oil producers. What many don't realize is that the U.S. last year was the world's largest oil producer because of shale oil. And shale oil is more expensive to produce than, say, oil in Saudi Arabia, where you just stick a pipe in the ground and there it is. But shale oil uh, producers uh, with oil prices this low can't sell oil for a profit for the most part. And so they're shutting down production and eventually this will help balance supply and demand. And, but they are also have taken out large loans to uh, finance their production. And those loans uh, are at high interest rates. So those shale oil producers are at risk as are the people who lent them that money, banks or investors who lent uh, these shale oil producers money. So they're at risk too. Russia, uh, OPEC um, have had a lot less revenue from oil because of the uh, sharp decline in oil prices from where they were before. Remember at the end of last year, oil prices are 50, $60 a barrel. Now they're 15 to 25. And so that's a, uh, a lot of lost revenue for Russia, whose main export is oil, and for Saudi Arabia, whose entire economy is based on oil. Let's take Saudi Arabia as an example because there are many uh, different factors at play. Uh, Saudi Arabia is a relatively young population, but its younger people have grown up uh, with jobs that have been finance with oil money, and they get a stipend from the government every month. Um, and if oil, this oil money dries up, how is Saudi Arabia going to pay the stipend? Saudi Arabia needs to move its economy away 
from uh, an oil dependence to uh, a broader based manufacturing dependence. Can they do that? It's harder, much harder, when you don't have all the oil revenue flowing in. So you have problems with your population that's come to depend on oil money for their livelihood and expects that oil money to be there for their livelihood. And you have problems with your economy that's just based almost entirely on oil, but that oil longer term is not going to be viable. If people are going to turn to new energy sources rather than oil. So you have two problems working together which lower oil prices and therefore lower, lower oil income create a big problem.